Hello guys, welcome at RC Gym. Uh, just a short little update on the Vortex and on my findings regarding the FPV cams I wanted to use. The standard cam it comes with is this Fat Shark 700 TV Lines 1. I swapped the lens uh, to this 2.1 mm lens instead of this 2.8 millimeters because I want to have more wide angle and because of the somewhat low dynamic range of the standard cam I also tried out this Armway 700 TV lines wide dynamic range cam but it looks like it looks like the same so there's not much difference between the Fetchark and the Armway I think this one is cheaper um, and initially I was fooled from their packaging on the one side it has the CMOS labeling with the data and on the other side it has CCD labeling so maybe they sell different products in the same box of course they do with these check boxes here um, so I Initially I thought this would be a CCD cam, which would be really cool if they had so small CCD cams. But it's just the CMOS that rivals the performance of CCD, but yeah. I didn't find uh, much of a difference between the Fat Shark and the Armway here. What I then found out, and that's, that's funny, everyone uh, is telling me that the HS1177 uh, is supposed to be one of the best cams. It's a CCD cam and I already had it in my hangar. So I have this this one here bought from Surveil Zone. It's this just labeled mini video camera uh, that you get for $45 at SurveilZone.com and I read on the sticker here that it's the Sony Super HED HS1177M for Mini and this sounds good because yeah high voltage range it's Mini so if you uh, swap this this red uh, ring adapter so that the lens is sticking out more then the extra length of this camera is fine because if you see it in comparison, yeah, it's, it's about the same size. So it would fit in there nice, but as I had to find out, this cam has an incompatible um, OSD setting. So it uses an OSD by itself, and even if it's not visible, it interferes with the OSD from the Vortex. So. The Vortex uses the American OSD frequency and this uses the Asian OSD frequency as I read on RC groups. So yes, the HS1177 is a good swap, but not the mini version. Until someone can tell me a trick how to configure this thing, uh, what to change to make it compatible, but as I, as I understood it is not swap, uh, not changeable. So a good CCD cam but it doesn't work in the Vortex. So my next steps will be I will get the larger 1177, not the mini version and try to fit it in there. I heard that it sticks out uh, through the hole and you have to make some bumpers uh, not to crash the cam in the ground on landings. But yeah, looks like an easy mod. And what's the problem with CMOS versus CCD? Well, I did uh, record uh, some samples from outside uh, with CMOS and CCD and yeah, from the DVR of the Fat Shark. See for yourself. I mean, it's not the best conditions today for this testing, but yeah, you see that the low dynamic range is the problem. This is the Aon Wave versus the Fat Shark, both in PAL mode and both with the same resolution. And what it's really the problem with CMOS cams is that uh, if you tilt up in the sky you see all the details but if you see also darker parts on the ground then the sky is all like white and I got the tip that the Fetchak should perform better in PAL mode 
So I compare it here also between PAL and NTSC, but for me it doesn't look very much different. Maybe PAL is a bit better, it should have a better resolution. Here again the FET chuck on the right side and the HS1177 on the left side. And you see the CCD has detail in the sky even if it looks straight, but the OSD flickers. And I will also show you a sample video from my flight yesterday where I had the sun coming in at an unfortunate angle and in these situations it's really hard to see something which is dangerous if you fly close proximity. So yeah, a CCD would, would really help there, I, I guess. And the other interesting thing I tested this morning, as with the video I saw yesterday from uh, RCFPV, check out his channel, um, he brought me to the idea to test all the channels of the Vortex uh, for their milliwatt rating, because on different channels you have different milliwatts output performance. I used the Immersion RC power meter, RF power meter, with a 30 dB attenuator and this extension cable and then going into the vortex here. Um, you have to uh, let it sit there for a while to warm up because initially it shows more than uh, if it's at a good, good heat, good working heat. Here yeah, check out my beautiful handwriting and I did some tests on the Immersion RC band channel 1 through to 8 the first measurements and second measurements I mean they differ a bit even if this was also with the good heated up system yeah, 350 milliwatts, 327, 306, 280, 280, 270, 260, 246 so it degrades with the higher channel number what else did I test? the boss cam E setup uh, the Boscam E band. Here I also did two measurements. And on the higher channels, I initially only had 192. But if you let it on this channel for some, yeah, for maybe one minute, it goes up to 230, 225, 200. And on channel 8, it's only 164 compared to 406 on the second channel or 453 on the fourth channel so that's really really some interesting stuff uh, Boscam B band what did we see here yeah about the same picture at Boscam E oh, it's, it's more equally spread here and we have both cam A, which is also spread around with the highest on the 8th channel, which is 392 milliwatts. The race band, which many of you guys maybe are using, if you have the new race band receivers also, shows some interesting stuff. And this might be worth a consideration if you're racing you should try to get one of the highest rated channels to have some advantage over your bodies here again it's yeah, first and second measurement it differs a bit which yeah, 469 versus 215 that's yeah, half the power okay so that's it um, other than the, the slight camera issues on, on weird lighting situations, I really had fun flying the Vortex yesterday. I did some first dives. I wasn't too too brave yet, but it, it worked cool. And I had back wind from the dive down, so it really got fast and yeah, yeah it worked cool. I hope I can show you this video soon. And I also did some flying over a river and under a bridge, which was also quite cool. Hey, just one more thing. I just got a delivery. I got the Hobby King uh, graphene batteries I ordered for the Vortex. And I followed some discussions about the packaging. 
and it really comes in a luxury case in a box with a magnet in such a cool little bag and they are yeah, didn't weigh them myself but they are rated at 240 grams which is a bit heavy for the vortex but it's yeah it's a compromise it's 1800 milliamps they are told to perform very well I will test this and in my other flights till now I used the 2200 nanotechs which are also not too bad I mean I got around seven minutes with those if I fly not full throttle all the time and you see the size and also about the width. Now this is this is 250 gram. This is 240. So for max flying time, you would go with the Nanotex. Those are more powerful. As for the fittings, since it is the same with like the 2200 milliamps, it will fit. I mean, it's a tight fit. I have to go all the way to the front with not touching the vibration isolated camera mount and they have to rest a bit on the receiver which is not optimal but it works and um, not to get the cables in the way I use such a little additional strap where the balance plug and the main plug uh, are secured on top the battery so but I'm really curious to see how those graphenes work. I ordered four of them. They were stocked in European warehouse and they came they came in under a week. Yeah, so that's good fast delivery. They cost $30, which is not super expensive. It's expensive for hobby king batteries, but yeah, considering what they promise, yeah. Yeah, some of the guys are not too happy about them being heavy. They are protected with glass fiber plates up and down and have a heat shrink style covering instead of this normal glossy one. So, bit of a change. I mean, it's not a total, total change of battery technology here. Graphene sounds so futuristic. We'll see this, but they promise and then some some uh, clever guy on, on RC groups already tested tested this and made uh, 600 or 900 cycle charges they hold up to their promise that they have a longer lifespan because on those novels I don't know what's what what you guys have in experience but I think I get 100 charges out of this and then it's only the half capacity I will have to see this for, for these nanotechs, maybe they are better, but most of my batteries, yeah, I don't have more than 100 or maybe 150 charges. Um, so if they can really hold up to 600 charges, it would really be a good investment. But yeah, for me, the, the main reason to buy those was the, the extra power they should be able to deliver. And the Vortex is a power-hungry little beast. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you have some questions regarding these cams or if you need links, if you need links, check the description. If you have questions, leave me a comment. You know the deal. Thanks for watching. Bye.